Okay, this is Dr. Brown. In this short video, we're going to talk about uh, taking the derivative at a point and to also talking about the derivative as a function. Now, I want you to remember when we talk about derivatives, there are uh, several terms that we use that all really mean the same thing. Number one, when we talk about the derivative of f of x, which we call f prime of x, sometimes we might call it y prime. That's the same thing as the instantaneous the instantaneous rate of change of f of x with respect to x. It also is the slope of the tangent line at the point x. Now, you've seen this diagram several times. It shows you how we calculate the uh, derivative of f of x. And basically, we look at the, at the uh, function y equal f of x. We look at a point x, and then we look at a point x plus h. And we're going to let h ultimately go to, to, to zero or approach zero. And uh, that will actually calculate the slope of the tangent line. And uh, so the derivative of f of x is the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h. That's the y value here minus f of x, which is the y value here, that would be the rise. And we divide that by the run, which is h. And that is the derivative. So we're going to calculate that for several um, examples. The first one we're going to look at is to find the slope of the curve y equal 1 over x at any point and then find what the slope is at x equal minus 1 and also answer the question where on this graph does the slope equal, equal minus 1 quarter. Now I do want to show you one thing or remind you of one thing that I think you already know and if, if you are combining two fractions or fractional expressions like A over B minus C over D with different denominators, I think you should know that they have to have the same denominator in order to uh, combine numerators. And that turns out to be AD minus BC divided by BD. And we're going to use this to um, calculate the derivative. Now, f of x plus h is just 1 over x plus h. So our first derivative, 
of f of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x divided by h. And we can write that as the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h times 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x. And um, that equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over h. And doing this cross multiplication, ad is going to be x, and then minus bc is going to be minus x plus h. And uh, that will all be over x times x plus h. Now looking at the numerator, this becomes a limit as h approaches 0, a 1 over h. Notice the x terms cancel, and we're left with 1 over h. Um, times minus h divided by x times x plus h. And notice what has happened here, as we've seen in all kinds of cases when we calculate derivatives. The h cancels, and we're left with calculating the limit as h approaches 0 of minus 1 over x times x plus h. And if we're letting h go to 0, this is simply equal to minus 1 over x squared. So that is the derivative of f of x. So f prime of x is simply minus 1 over x squared. And now we can answer the question about what is the slope of the tangent line at x equal minus 1. f prime at minus 1 is just simply equal to minus 1 over minus 1 squared equal minus 1. Now, as far as the question of where does the slope equal minus one quarter, we now want to set f prime of x, which is minus one over x squared, equal to minus one fourth. And cross multiplying, we get minus 4 equal minus x squared. So this implies that x squared equal 4, and x is equal to plus or minus 2. So there are two values of x for which the slope of the tangent line is equal to minus 1 quarter. And on the next page, you see a graph of y equal 1 over x, and indeed, at x equal 2 and x equal minus 2, the slope of the tangent line is minus 1 quarter. Now, the next problem we're going to look at, we 
want to differentiate the function f of x equals x over x minus 1. Uh, so as we always do, we have to form the expression f of x plus h. And uh, plugging in x plus h everywhere we see an x, we get f of x plus h is x plus h over x plus h minus 1. And, of course, the derivative is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So plugging in f of x plus h, we get uh, this term, and then we subtract off f of x, and we divide by h. We can pull uh, 1 over h out of the expression, factor it out, and now we're going to do the cross multiplication again, uh, just so you'll remember a over b minus c over d is equal to ad minus bc over bd. So we'll do cross multiplication and we get AD is X plus H times X minus 1. And then minus BC would be minus X times X plus H minus 1. All divided by X plus H minus 1 times X minus 1. And now we're going to multiply all this out, and we have to multiply these two terms together and subtract the product of these two terms. And as you can see, it's x squared minus x plus hx minus h, then subtracting off this term, we get minus x squared minus hx plus x. And now let's see how much we can cancel, and there's quite a lot here. We can cancel x squared and x squared. We can cancel x minus x and x, and plus hx and minus hx. So all we have left in the numerator is minus h, and the denominator is x plus h minus 1 times x minus 1. And here again, as we always do, we get the h's to cancel. That uh, rids us of the problem of dividing by 0. And we end up with minus 1 divided by x plus h minus 1 times x minus 1, and we're letting h go to 0, and that simply is going to be 1 over x minus 1 times x minus 1. And so the answer is minus 1 over x minus 1 squared is the derivative of the function x over x minus 1. Now in the next one, I want you to find the derivative of f of x equal the square root of x. And um, of course you want to find f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. And I would like for you to pause the video now and uh, try to calculate this yourself. And uh, I want you to find the derivative of f of x equal the square root of x. And then 
couldn't find the equation for the tangent line at x equal 4. So that'll be uh, x equal 4 and y equal 2. So at the point 4 and 2, find the equation of the tangent line. So pause the video now and try to do this yourself. Then come back and see if you did it correctly. So if you're back, um, we write that um, f prime of x equals the limit of the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x divided by h and the limit as h approaches 0. And you know that the um, strategy you use here is to multiply the numerator and denominator by the radical conjugate. So there's your original term, and we're going to multiply the numerator by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And we need to do that to the denominator also. And as we do this, um, we will get the radical x plus h times radical x plus h. It's just going to be x plus h. Um, by the way, let me put the, the limit there. It's a limit. as h approaches 0 um, of x plus h. The outside terms and inside terms cancel one another. And then the last terms multiplied together gives us minus x. And we have h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And um, didn't quite want that radical to go that far, so let's get that correct. Square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Notice that the x is canceled. And we get the limit as h approaches 0 of h divided by h square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. The h is canceled again. I'm sure you folks are seeing a pattern here. And when we let h equal to 0, we simply get 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of x, which is 1 over 2 square roots of x. So um, let's give ourselves a little more room here. L prime of x is 1 over 2 square roots of x. The, uh, that's the derivative, and then L prime at x equal 4 will give us the slope of the tangent line at x equal 4. So we plug that in, and we get 1 quarter. So now we know... that the tangent line is 
is y equals 1 quarter x plus b. And to find b, we need to plug in y equal 2 and x equal 4. So we get 2 equal 1 quarter times 4 plus b. And we get that b is equal to the 1. So the equation of the tangent line is y equal 1 quarter x plus 1. And on the next page, you'll see a graph of the function y equal the square root of x, and also a graph of the tangent line at the point 4 and 2. And there you have it. Now I want to talk a little bit about some cases where you don't have a derivative or a, a tangent line at a point on a graph. If you have looked at graphs like this, which obviously have lots of places where you have tangent lines. There are no sharp corners or anything. So there are an infinite number of places on this graph that uh, has tangent lines. But consider the function y equal the absolute value of x. And you see the graph here. On um, For x less than 0, the uh, slope of the um, line is minus 1. For x more than 0, the slope is plus 1. But at the point 0, 0, uh, there's a sharp point there, and the derivative from the left and right do not agree. And therefore, uh, the derivative y prime is not defined at x equals 0. On the next page, we'll consider other cases. Suppose you had a graph going like this and then changing directions very quickly where you had a sharp point. You can see that the tangent lines um, go like this and have a positive slope on the left-hand side. The tangent lines on the right uh, have a negative slope. And at the point P, the tangent line or derivative uh, is, is not defined. Also, you have a uh, case here on the right, in example two, where you have what is called a cusp. If you are going towards point P from the left, the, um, the slope of the tangent line is approaching plus infinity, whereas if you come in from the right, the tangent lines have a negative slope and are approaching minus infinity. So at point P, this sharp point, the tangent line and the derivative are not defined. On this last slide, uh, there are other examples. Here, we're coming in from the right. And then curving over. And you see that you can write a, draw a tangent line at point P, but its slope is infinite slope. In other words, um, the um, derivative is not defined at that point. 
or you could say that the tangent line slope is approaching plus infinity. Another case where you have a, a major discontinuity, in fact you have a hole here, and then the value of the function takes a jump, and uh, at point P the tangent line is not defined at all. Um, here's a sort of a makeup example here. You have a nice smooth curve going like this, except somebody decided to put a hole in the function and define the value of the function to be way up here at the point P. Uh, this function is continuous everywhere except at point P. And um, the derivative from the left and the right seem to um, agree with one another, but at the point P, no derivative is defined.